Welcome to the Embassy Row Project podcast. Today we are going to spotlight one of the latest books by Embassy Row Project founder, James Scott, entitled, A Fast Track to Carbon Neutral, Using Environmental Commodities to Rapid Launch Commercial Sustainability Programs. This book can be found on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback, and in other stores where books are sold. Introduction Our planet has evolved to heal itself through a natural process of photosynthesis and carbon sequestration, but Earth's natural mechanisms for self-healing are no match for man's hypertoxic industrial emissions that accelerate anthropogenic climate change. The Paris Climate Agreement and the recent COP27 climate conference have set ambitious goals for the reduction of anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions, with the ultimate goal of reaching net zero emissions by 2050 and limiting the global increase in temperatures well below 2 degrees Celsius. To reach these goals, immediate and coordinated action is required, while new technologies are being developed to help reach these goals using renewable energy, carbon sequestration from the atmosphere, etc. There are technologies and solutions that can be deployed immediately to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The most effective solutions are market-based solutions that can be implemented without a large permanent public investment. However, these solutions will probably need public-private partnerships to accelerate their adoption to meet the greenhouse gas emissions reduction goals. It has been well established that climate change is primarily driven by anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. Human activity is causing long-term detrimental climate trends that will be very difficult or impossible to reverse. Therefore, for the past few decades, there has been a concerted international effort to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. However, these efforts have been largely ineffective. The concentration of atmospheric CO2 reached 414.7 parts per million at the end of 2021. Even though the reduction of CO2 emission in 2020 slowed down the rate of increase of the atmospheric CO2 concentration by about 0.18 parts per million, the atmospheric CO2 growth amounted to around 47% of total CO2 emissions during the last decade, with the rest absorbed by CO2 sinks land absorbs around 28% and ocean around 25% of total emissions. After a decrease of around 5.4% in global greenhouse gas emissions in 2020, induced by lockdowns and interruptions in global trade and travel caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the emissions have bounced back in 2021 to values close to pre-pandemic levels, global carbon budget. 2021. The decrease in 2020 was 1.9 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year for around 34.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year, comparable to the 2012 emissions level. However, the total emissions in 2021 were around 36.4 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year, compared to 36.7 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year in 2019. This can be attributed mostly to the increased demand for energy, with emissions from coal and gas increasing above 2019 levels, mainly caused by electricity production. While emissions from oil remain below their 2019 level due to lower demand for global transport and travel, on the national level, the increase is driven by the developing countries. Emissions in China were higher by 5.5% compared to 2019 levels, reaching 11.1 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year. India exhibited 4.4% higher emissions, reaching 2.7 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year global carbon budget. 2021. On the other hand, the 2021 emissions in the United States 5.1 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year, the European Union 2.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year, and the rest of the world 14.8 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year in total remain 3.7%, 4.2%, and 4.2% lower than respective 2019 levels. The carbon budget is an estimate total amount of global emissions that has a 50% likelihood to limit global warming to a particular level levels usually considered are 1.5 Celsius, 1.7 Celsius, and 2 Celsius increase in average global temperatures. At the start of 2022, the estimate remaining carbon budget has shrunk to 420, 770, and 1,000, 200, and 70 gigatons of carbon dioxide for a global temperature increase of 1.5 Celsius, 1.7 Celsius, and 2 Celsius, respectively. This is equivalent to 11, 20, and 32 years of emissions at the 2021 level, respectively. 
total anthropogenic emissions were 38.0 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year in 2020 and 39.4 gigatons of carbon dioxide per year in 2021. To reach net zero emissions by 2050, we must cut about 1.4 gigatons of CO2 per year on average, which is the difference between 2020 and 2021 emissions. This highlights the magnitude of the task at hand and the urgency of immediate action. There is a complementary market mechanism that can be used to accelerate the adoption of methods for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions carbon markets. This is a market framework where carbon savings and negative emissions can be traded by entities that employ carbon sequestration methods to allow other companies to compensate for their emissions while providing a financial stimulus for carbon sequestration and greenhouse gas emissions reduction. This also drives innovation because the development of better greenhouse gas emissions reduction methods can bring immediate economic benefits. These carbon markets have already been shown to provide an effective market-based mechanism for emissions reduction. And the main issue has been to expand them geographically, increase the supply of carbon credits, and provide a uniform framework for their operation. Under the Kyoto Protocol, 192 countries committed to the reduction of greenhouse emissions. Signed in 1997, the protocol came into force in 2005, although Canada withdrew in 2012, and the United States never ratified it. During the first commitment period to 0082012, 36 countries participated to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, with mixed success, while 37 countries 34 ratified with additional targets. In 2015, the Paris Agreement was agreed upon by 196 countries to keep the overall global temperature change below 2 Celsius and preferably to 1.5 Celsius. The emissions are to be reduced as quickly as possible and net zero emissions should be achieved by 2050. However, the current national targets set under the Paris Agreement would be insufficient to reach these stated goals, while enforcement mechanisms are weak or non-existent. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please like, share and leave a comment. For more information about the Embassy Row Project's International Environmental Commodities Trade Missions, contact us today at embassyroadproject.org.